from the farthest corner of the People's Republic of China. From the highest mountain slopes of Outer Mongolia. From the soft underhair closest to the skin of a goat, which lives above 8,000 feet, comes the rare fiber which is processed in Scotland into Kashmir, the world's rarest natural fiber. Kashmir is rare because the goats can only be combed once a year, in the spring. It's rare because the long, harsh hairs which make up one half of the combed fleece have to be painstakingly removed in order to leave the part which is truly soft. It's rare and exclusive because it takes the under hair from two goats to make one sweater, from 24 to make an overcoat. Dawson International is the largest processor of raw cashmere in the world and has developed a unique process for cleaning the matted, oily and coarse material. Dawson International is a group of companies specializing in spinning, knitting and manufacturing cashmere clothes. Todd and Duncan on the banks of Loch Leven in Scotland spin the yarn. Pringle of Scotland are the largest manufacturers of cashmere knitwear in the world. Ballantyne are world famous for their design characteristics. Braemar is the oldest name in Scottish knitwear. And Barry is the up and coming name. As a group, we are dedicated to supplying world markets with Scottish cashmere of the highest quality. Clothes such as these, stylish, elegant, and made with traditional Scottish craftsmanship. The softness of cashmere is its inherent joy. Softness of touch and wear. And that softness has to be cultivated right through the manufacturing process. Beginning with the dyeing of the fiber, the material is moistened first of all with soft Scottish water. And the amount of dye, the length of time the mixture is heated into the fleece, the correct amount of spinning to withdraw the moisture, all these stages are critical. Any slight variation could result in a whole batch of expensive cashmere being rendered useless. So experience, patience and practical knowledge is necessary. Even when dyeing the raw white color into a camel shade, which is always fashionable and internationally popular. We dye individual colors for individual markets. After all, the color most favored on a Californian golf course is quite different from the muted shade popular at the weekend in Yokohama. We are unique in forecasting color trends and supplying our customers with the required shades for all markets. Dyeing presses the fibers together, so they have to be fluffed up in order to be blended. This machine gently separates the concentrated dyed batch then passes it through the pipe to the top of the blending tower. Because cashmere is such a delicate and live product, it's never quite possible to achieve exact uniformity in dyeing. But this blending process gets rid of variations gently and effectively, ensuring consistency both in color and quality. Once blended, natural oils are added again to the cashmere in order to give it additional strength for the spinning process but the fibers are still tangled and need to be stretched out so that they can end up as a workable yarn. They go into the carding machines, which first of all ensure that the raw material is loaded onto the rollers evenly, and then is combed by thousands of minute combs on the big roller, beginning the intricate job of separating the fibers and getting them all to lie in the same direction. The first stage of the process ends in a fine, soft cashmere rope, which along with other ropes is once again combed, so that the fibers are given a second chance of separating. The carding process makes the cashmere lighter and lighter. It also ensures that subsequent combings are in a different direction by loading the cashmere at a different angle than before. 
The whole process is similar to stretching out the contents of a packet of cotton wool that you've bought at your local chemist. By now, the material is so fine that it is guided gently into channels in the rollers, so that it finally appears as yarn held together by the uniform direction of millions of individual fibers, the natural oils, and very little else. The famous spinning jelly was invented in 1768. And the basic principle of that invention is still in use in Scotland to this very day. This amazing machine draws the yarn, stretches it, spins it, and winds it onto bobbins. The bobbins are wound onto cones. And the cones of spun cashmere are sent by Todd and Duncan to quality knitters and weavers all over the world. A knitted sweater is made up from a number of separate parts. The front, the back, the sleeves, two ribbed cuffs, a collar where necessary, and two skirts which are the ribbed end of the sweater. The knitting sequence begins with the cuffs and the skirts. Here a sweater is knitted by hand. Two to three years are necessary to train the knitter to apply the correct and consistent tension of stitch to the ribbed cuff or skirt onto which the main part of the sweater will be knitted. At this stage, the yarn is still oily, giving it strength and allowing for any blemishes from the knitting process to be washed out. Many collars are knitted by hand. Most skirts and cuffs are knitted automatically. Collars, cuffs and skirts are always knitted one after the other, with a separating thread knitted in at the correct row. That thread is taken out by hand. The cuff or skirt is then placed by hand onto a bar, which will be transferred to the power knitting machines so that the sleeve or body can be knitted on. Once again, skilled workers are capable of threading each individual point, and there are hundreds, without dropping a stitch. As many as eight to 12 cuffs or skirts are placed onto the bar. The machine is programmed to take off the items one at a time and feed them into the knitting frames. It takes five and a half kilometers of yarn to make one sweater. And these big machines knit half a million stitches a minute and can make 12 items at once, fully fashioning the necessary part of the sweater. Because we believe fully fashioning offers our customers a truly comfortable and elegant fit. The length of stitch is constantly checked because only by controlling every stage in minute detail can the final quality of Scottish cashmere be ensured. And any flaws are spotted. Every part of every sweater is checked again and again, making certain of the supremely high standard of Scottish craftsmanship which the world has come to expect. Then the body and sleeve panels are joined together. Once again, skill and experience feed the machine by hand. This way the open stitches are picked up and the sections don't get a chance to run before they're linked together. So, the front, the back and the sleeves are seamed together and the basic bodies are ready to be milled. Milling or washing is the make or break part of the operation. It may not look skilled, but careful washing gets the oil out of the fibers. Rinsing in pure Scottish river water brings life back to the fibers.
spin drying loosens the fibers and coaxes back the softness. And drying allows the stitches to fall back into place. All these functions are critical. Too much or too little of any could waste the hard work and skill which has gone before. Each garment is checked inside out. This is one of the 18 checks which take place at intervals during manufacture. The special steam pressing is designed to retain the fully fashioned shape and size of the sweater before it goes to the finishing section. The sweater or cardigan is ready to have the V-neck shape cut and the front opened out. This is yet another instance of the amount of hand care which goes into the making of Scottish cashmere knitwear. The collars are attached. This linking process requires considerable training and extensive skill. Any ribbon binding necessary is fixed to the relevant areas. And the V is mitered by hand to ensure a perfectly neat finish. And then onto buttonholes. And after buttons, there are many other finishing touches by hand on trimmings and on labels. Sweater identity can be achieved by the use of embroidery, such as the Scottish lion, worn on golf courses all over the world, and other sporting club motifs. Possibly the peak of individual craftsmanship is to be found within Tarsi. Every single part of the pattern is inlaid by hand, requiring skill, creativity and stamina to produce patterns ranging from the traditional argyle to more complex and exotic designs which have to be meticulously followed from a carefully worked graph. Kashmir in Tarsi is one of the most coveted and exclusive products in the whole of the Kashmir collection. From raw material to finished product, Kashmir is Scottish. Kashmir is worked in Scotland by traditional craftsmen. Kashmir is the rarest of natural fibres and many thousands of people buy cashmere clothes every year. But the softness, the luxury and the versatility of cashmere need the experience and tradition of these members of Dawson International, makers of the most perfect knitwear in the world.